my name is Lynn Gillespie and you're at the Living Farm in Paonia, Colorado. And we're gonna go on a tour today of our various greenhouses and how we heat them. Let's go on this way. Come on in. So the reason that we can grow food in here year round without a heater is that we're sunk uh, four feet into the ground. So we have the warmth of the earth uh, warming the air for us. And then we also have the glazing on the south, which brings in the heat. And then we're solid on the north, which keeps out the cold. A uh, cement ledge that runs around the edge. The uh, glazing is just patio replacement windows with a layer of old greenhouse film on the front for insulation. Uh, this wall here is rammed earth. It's uh, 16 inches thick. It's just dirt uh, from the farm here. And this building has been in operation since 1987. We've never had to heat it even once. We get slightest amount of frost if we go below zero and then the next day everything thaws out. In this greenhouse we typically grow lots of beets and chard and the uh, leaves go into the salad mixes so we're just into uh, salad leaf production. And what we have is uh, beds that we can pick off of for almost a year or sometimes over a year. This is a, a patch of celery. Celery's a little hard to grow in Colorado, but it likes to grow in the building. So this is our solar greenhouse. Uh, we got a grant from CSU to do an experiment comparing growing with solar as opposed to propane. And we have uh, the pipes suck the hot air off the ceiling. It comes down, there's a little blower fan in the corner. And it blows the air down into these two lower layers of the bed. Um, these are full of gravel so they absorb the heat during the day and then at night they radiate the heat up into the soil level which is this level above the plastic and this is where the plants grow. And then in the winter time we have uh, the wires on at night and then we put uh, these heavy blankets on that go on for the night. All we're having to heat with our solar heater is just about you know 18 inches of the bed. So these fit on this way. So the whole building gets full of these little white tents and, and this is the space that we heat at night. Um, the success of this, we've been able to take the plants to where it's 13 degrees below zero outside, no frost inside, come in and pick salad the next day. So it's pretty satisfying. Uh, the electric bill for the system from October to March, I think last year was $165. Uh, the latest calculation that we did on propane is it would have cost us like $12,000 to heat this building for the same time period. And the annual production from October to March of all the, we have 19 beds in here, is about $3,000. So as you can see, paying a $12,000 propane bill wouldn't really make it work. So we're pleased with this system. It's worked great. It's been installed for six years now. No flaws. Works beautifully every winter. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite greenhouses because every day of the year we have plants in production. So it's just really enjoyable to be out here in this one. So this is our tomato house. You can see tomatoes. Um, we grow tomatoes in here from March until November. And then from November until March we grow salad greens. And the way the bed is heated, there is um, like a little plastic tubing that sits right down in the bottom of the bed and we run uh, warm water, 90 degree water in it, and it circulates from one end of the bed to the other. There's a thermostat at the other end that's set at 70 degrees, so that tells, tells the uh, water heater to turn off the water when the soil reaches 70 degrees. And currently we're just using a regular home domestic water heater. Uh, eventually we want to put that on a photovoltaic cell to create our energy for it. When we put the salad in here, we grow from November to March. Because we're in Colorado, it's very cold. Um, we have this guide wire here, and we have cloths um, that will go over the wire and down to the edge of the bed, and then we actually close pin it on this end. And what we end up doing is making a tent so that the heat rising up through the bed only has to heat this much of the building. So we can let the rest of the building get as cold as it wants. The salad is nice and snug and warm down under the beds. And it, you know, we can have three feet of snow outside and come in here and pick fresh salad for lunch. And it works really well. 
So we are in the big greenhouse. This building is 30 feet wide and 100 feet long. We also do production year-round in this building. We used to have the propane heaters in here and we sold them off. Yay. Uh, and what we did is we installed a geothermal heat system. Very simple homemade system. We have 175 feet of like six inch sewer pipe buried out in the parking lot, six feet deep, so it circulates out there. Um, outside we have an intake which looks similar to this and then we have the fan unit on the inside of the greenhouse. So when this building drops below 40 degrees the thermostat kicks on the fan and then we pull the air through the system um, underground and then it blows the 40-50 degree air into the greenhouse. And the beauty of this was it allowed me to grow year-round without the propane and it kept my soil from freezing. Um, we also use um, the wire covers in here like we do in the solar house and we use uh, plastic over the top of it. Outside air mm -hmm. goes through the earth, warms the air, and then blows it inside. And the reason that we have the intake on the outside is we're creating positive pressure inside the building. Mm -hmm. So we're always pushing out this way. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, then if we get a big temperature difference, like the sun sets and I have 70 degrees inside, but it's like 40 degrees outside, yeah. I am pushing the air towards the out instead of having it just suck all the heat yeah, out of the in. building. So just a little bit of positive pressure to help yeah. keep the, all the warmth from exiting too fast. Mm -hmm. 